Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on race, class, and ethnicity in popular culture. So one question that always comes up with regards to this series of topics is what does it have to do with regards to popular culture? Why are we talking about race, class, and ethnicity? We're studying popular culture. How do those two things go together? Well, we first have to recognize that our perceptions about race, class, and ethnicity are deeply embedded in popular culture. Uh, we find these representations all the time, and you'll find throughout this course we'll come back to how these ideas are there and represented. We also, many of us know of the stereotypes and associations connected to each group. That is, we are very familiar, whether we discuss them or not, about stereotypes or portrayals of people of different ethnicities, races, and classes. And we, we know many of those because they're very present in popular culture. We'll hear them from our friends, and yet we'll also hear them from a lot of different places besides just our friends or our family, that there are these portrayals that are present throughout culture. And it's also important to understand that there's some degree of hierarchy within the larger culture of these different groups of race, class, and ethnicity, that um, some races are more positively portrayed than others. Some classes are more acceptable and representative in popular culture, and in certain ethnicities are privileged over others in popular culture and in the cu culture at large. And so we want to be aware of that, is that there are you know, clearly representative, more positive group, subgroups within these categories. And then I think most importantly, regardless of whether we're conscious or not of these beliefs, whether we consciously believe them or not, we are shaped by them. And I think that's an important thing to remember is that they do influence how we think about things and how we're likely to react to certain people of different classes versus people, uh, you know, in, in people of different races. Uh, a good example of this is, of course, how people react to the homeless. Uh, if if you do not have much experience with the homeless, as you look at or interact or come into close contact with, there is a there is a viewpoint. There are certain prejudices that become very prominent. Uh, I think one of the best examples I can always offer around this is my own experience as a kid. Uh, I think I was, I think I was, yeah, I was nine years old and a. Japanese student had moved into into the area and was attending our school and what was strange was my reaction to that my reaction to that was oh he must he must know kung fu out of for no reason at all i i knew he must know kung fu um so i had that reaction and in in hindsight, I had to ask myself, like, where did I get that? He didn't know kung fu. He, you know, he it wasn't of any interest of his. He had lots of other interests. So he was a fully fledged human. But I was reducing him to, oh, he must know kung fu. And of course, it came from what I had absorbed from the various movies uh, that I had read, that I had watched in the '80s. It had come from, you know, the all the Bruce Lee movies and other types of martial arts movies that I had seen. Were of course. Anybody of Asian descent must know Kung Fu. So it's very interesting whether we consciously believe it or not, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, we're regularly shaped by our perceptions around these categories, and those perceptions are very much shaped by popular culture. So when we're talking about uh, race, class, ethnicity, and popular culture, we're really looking at explicit and implicit examples. And so when we talk about explicit, we mean, you know, really overt and purposeful. This means, you know, the, the, there is a clear attempt to represent and engage in or depict race, class, and ethnicity. And sometimes that's to have a meaningful discussion. And sometimes that's to uh, misrepresent, misinform, uh, you know, bash, wh wh whatever word you want to use. So, um, and sometimes it's to, you know, purposefully promote uh, a particular race, class, or ethnicity. But then we have implicit. 
And I like to kind of think about implicit as it's it's subtle. Um, it's not necessarily what was intended to happen, but or intended to be presented that way. But it did end up that way. Um, and I often think of it as channeling. That is, it's not a conscious act, but people channeling their anxieties around certain categories of race, class, and ethnicity. So let's take a look at some examples around this. Um, so if we're looking for explicit examples, I think the film American History X is a fantastic example of an explicit discussion around race in uh, American culture. Uh, the cultural reaction and engagement with Jeremy Lin, um, the basketball player who in the in the last two years became very very well known um, as a res in, in kind of the response that the culture had and you know it was fr it was um, coined as Lin sanity or they had all sorts of you know silly goofy puns around his name Lin and y you know depending on how you look at this this could be considered race this could be considered ethnicity um, really kind of depending on what's emphasized in, in how the dialogue plays out but it certainly is a, a explicit example where because he was a person of Asian descent that was playing basketball and that's not common and he he was getting a lot of attention so that that was a, a another good example of this and then finally, the show Shameless, uh, which is, I believe, on HBO or Showtime. Um, this is a this is a show that's very much about class and the fa this family, the the Gallagher's, and kind of how they survive from literally day to day, um, despite having no real or having very limited means of income and a lot of people to take care of. Now, implicit examples of race, class, and ethnicity. Uh, the site People of Walmart is a great one that I tend to think of as, or I tend to see it as one of class discussion. Um, again, it's it's just the site is focused around depicting people from Walmart, often, um, you know, a, as outrageous, ridiculous, crazy, or whatever. I mean, it's it's really a, a spectacle site where people go and they they laugh. You know, anybody visiting the site, the purpose is to go and to laugh at the people. So, if you notice on this main page right now, you have feature creature, and it's a man in in some kind of outfit wearing heels. So it is a site that's very much having this this discussion. I, I tend to associate this more with class than I would um, ethnicity or race because the idea is the association is of Walmart as a place for um, people of lower class. Action comics, uh, and people might be surprised by this one, but this could this is very much one uh, focused in or based within ethnicity for several different reasons. The first is that, I mean, Superman really is the ultimate immigrant. He comes from another place to America to, you know, really capture the American dream. And he's continually trying to find a balance between, you know, his the, the place in which he comes from, Krypton, and the place in which he lives, Metropolis. And so he's balancing these two different lives that he's familiar with and he knows. And then also, in, and we'll talk about this later on in the course, uh, many of the people involved in comics, particularly early comics, were Jewish. And so there are various Jewish attributes imbued into the comic book characters. In fact, Superman in many ways um, has been compared to Moses, who of course is sent by his parents down the river so he can live, and then brought up in a very different culture. He, in the case of Moses, he's brought up by the um, Egyptian pharaoh. In the case of Superman, he's brought up by Ma and Pa Kent. And then Avatar, uh, and this is a film, you know, this film is is very similar to action comics in certain ways, you know, both of these deal with aliens, and one of the things that we see with implicit examples of race and ethnicity is that people will often 
you know, see this happening in alien, in stories that feature aliens or people from other planets or clones or, you know, th there's a, these often have science fiction tints to them. But Avatar, again, we have these human-like creatures who... Um, who are encountered by actual by by humans and there's this conflict and there's been many comparisons of avatar uh with the depiction of avatar with the pocahontas story john smith and the pocahontas story so these you know these aren't directly saying this is about how we deal with race in america but implicitly they are so what you know these are great examples but you know the question is why 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 we having this discussion and i think again it's important to realize these issues permeate us everywhere that so often there are discussions within our popular culture of race class and ethnicity um, they're present they're important they're negotiating our belief systems and really how we look at other people um, you know not so much as, as individuals but as parts of categories and as an example, I want to look at um, the top 10 grossing films of 2012, because I think this is a fascinating uh, example of what we're talking about here. So if we look at these films, you know, initially you could say, eh, there's not, you know, th there's not too much there for us to think about. But let's take a walk down this list. We have The Hobbit, and The Hobbit is very much focused on race. You have the uh, you have the dwarves who are trying to reclaim their kingdom from a dragon, you know. And so we have to think about this. These are all sentient beings, pe beings that are self-aware and pitted against one another. So the dwarves are trying to to save their you know save their kingdom from a dragon, while at the same time having to fight trolls and and goblins. Meanwhile, the elves are are putting up uh, walls between the between the the dwarves and their attempt to reclaim the place. So there's lots of different races and there's lots of different feuds around that. The Django Unchained, of course, is um, or Django Unchained is, is certainly a a film all about race. I mean, it's about the free, you know, it's about how Django f is ultimately, or frees himself and then attempts to save his wife and all the different clashes between whites and blacks that get fueled into that. Les Miserables is certainly a film all about um, class and class struggle taking place, of course, in uh, in France during one of their revolutionary phases that it's, it's it's very much focused on class and how do you you know how do you get past your class so Jack Reacher is within the film one of the major components of uh, what goes on is the Russians and so again here we have depictions of Russians as criminals and um, people who are negatively associated or represented. Parental Guidance, it's a film that deals, uh, it's one I haven't seen and can't speak much to, but it does, it, you know, it's one that speaks to generational differences. Um, this is 40, certainly, you know, speaks to class and kind of how people at 40, middle class people are striving to figure their lives out. Zero Dark Thirty is about ethnicity and kind of the, you know, the West, um, torturing the uh, various people in the war on terror. Guilt Trip is generational, although Guilt Trip is also, is also eth um, ethnicity as it deals with a mother and her son, uh, a Jewish mother and her son as they're trying to, um, well, travel across the country to help sell a product. Monsters Inc. You could you could lay that or understand that as ethnicity, in that it's certainly you know you have these different types of monsters, different representative forms of monsters, and how they get along or don't get along, and then um, playing for keeps I I wasn't as familiar with and so hadn't found information on. 
Alright, so for this week we are taking a look at the film Bamboozled, and I really do encourage you to sit down and give yourself some time with this film. This film is not for children, so I do not recommend watching it with other people with any children present. It's an adult film and really sit down and try to think about what Spike Lee is trying to do here. It's a very complicated film. It's a hard film. Um, and what I mean by that is there are times when you want to laugh but you're not sure or you're uncomfortable. There are times when you um, you know, are going to see things or things depicted that it's going to be hard to process or to make sense of. So, kind of be sitting with that and thinking about, you know, what Spike Lee was trying to do and how this ties into our overall discussion of race, class, ethnicity, and ethnicity. Alright, that's all for this mini lecture. Thank you very much for listening.